Aye. What's your memories of the World Cup in 1998, being a Scotland and Hibs fan? I don't think I'll ever forget the opening game against Brazil. In some senses, I don't think many of us have got expectations of Scotland winning the World Cup. So to be in the opening game of the World Cup against Brazil in this new fantastic stadium in Paris was just something that will long live in the memory. Uh, the whole spectacle of the whole thing, the day itself, the, the pre-match, which Scotland fans obviously always enjoy the pre-match, uh, but the colour, the opening ceremony, um, there's always a special atmosphere when Scotland play Brazil anyway, there's a, there's a real camaraderie amongst the fans. Uh, obviously we went behind to an early goal, but to get the equaliser, John Collins and the penalty, and to I do remember pinching myself at half time thinking, here we are, Scotland in the World Cup. I'd Grew up as a as a boy, almost expecting Scotland to be at the World Cup, or at World Cup after World Cup, but to be standing there in that stadium at half time, and Scotland are drawing with the world champions one each, was was something that was quite special. And of course, it was a usual bad luck story, the own goal from 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 Tommy Lloyd in the in the second half. But I have to say, in all the Scotland games I've been at over the years, that was something a bit special. And I've never actually watched the game until quite recently. It was shown on on television through lockdown um, and when you watch back and you see how well that Scotland team played that, that day we were very much in the game so that was um, there's been lots of special moments following Scotland but I have to say that was up there with the best of them Were you there in Paris or were you, were you what were you doing were you at Paris you No I was there I was You were there, there. you were the in the ground I was in the ground yes. um, How did you manage to get a ticket? Was it just your contacts with Hibs or the SFA? Well I'm, I'm I'm a member of the, the Tartan Army uh, yes. and I do go to as many of the games as I, as I can get to. Um, I didn't have enough points, I have to admit, for the Brazil game. Um, I was there with my son for the, the Scotland-Norway game, but I had to acquire a ticket for the Brazil game, but there was no way in the world I was going to miss that game. Uh, Scotland at the, the opening of the World Cup against Brazil. Um, I know there was a massive scramble, uh, and, and I have to say I had to put my, my hand in my pocket to make sure that I could... I could get there and I was, I was delighted that I, that I did. Then we go on to the Euro 2000 teams, right, the qualifiers, and then we get England in the playoff after, I don't <laughs> know, what do you make of those two games at Hamden? Well the game at Hamden was disappointing wasn't it, um, to lose the way that we did. Uh, also I mean, I mean a terrible atmosphere uh, around the place, I remember the, 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 the trouble that took place and even, even spread to Edinburgh when I was back home that evening as well but so I mean you had your ticket to Wembley you're never going to turn down a, a chance to go and see Scotland at Wembley and I, I mean I have to say I think you probably went down there more than more in hope than, than expectation. Did you ask how you get down there or did you fly or did you get the train or did you get the car or the bus? Uh, I think on that particular occasion I'd flown down um, and I was there with one of my, one of my pals um, but the atmosphere in the Scotland then was was quite something. It was electric. Um, the place was, to use a phrase which is often used, the place was bouncing. What a performance. What do you think of Don Hodgson's goal? How did you feel when that went in? Elated. Elated. Mm -hmm. And we were so much on top at the time as well. Mm -hmm. And we were pressing so much for a second goal. I think, I mean, we did believe that, that, that Scotland could do it, that we could we could overcome the, the 2 0 deficit from Hamden. But again, and if you look at the reaction at the end of the game, okay, we lost, we lost 2 1, that was disappointing. Mm -hmm. But I do remember the reaction from the Scotland fans, and we were in Wembley for a long period after it, cheering, mm -hmm. clapping, and applauding the team for the effort that we put into it. We actually deserved to win that game more than 1 0. Uh, we, uh, we should have extracted a price from England in that game, and sadly, sadly we didn't. But it was a wonderful performance uh, from Craig Brown's team that night. And then we go on to the World Cup qualifiers for 2002. Craig, unfortunately, didn't qualify. He retired. Better votes came in. He started capping a lot of players. What Germans do, they were renowned for capping young players to find their future talent. The one in particular was James McFadden. Yeah. They classed him as a cheeky boy yeah. in Hong Kong. Yeah. We went to, we got to the playoffs against Holland. What do you make of James' goal? But against Holland? It was, I mean, I have to say, you know, when you think back of all the Scotland goals, and you, you can think of Sparky with his free kicks against England were, were somewhat special. Another hard luck story in uh, 2017, of course. But McFadden's strike, um, I was actually almost parallel 
with him when he, when he hit that shot. That hammered it. But uh, it was something special. And we know how good that Dutch team were. Mm -hmm. we, we found out the, the next week when we went across to Amsterdam. But um, that was a performance. That was a clearly a player uh, in that game. And of course what he achieved yeah. in Paris as well. Mm -hmm. uh, with another... another we'll, we'll, talk, we'll, we'll talk about that. Did you go to Paris? I did. Is that your biggest regret not to see that goal? Yes. Where yeah. were you when you seen the goal? On um, the, reason, the reason I wasn't at the game is because I was working and I was actually, I was in Amsterdam that night. I was in a, a bar in, in Rocken, the, the Irish bar that mm -hmm. Scotland fans will know from the, the, the trips over there. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife was watching it at home and I don't think she's ever quite forgiven me mm -hmm. that I, I wasn't able to wangle it, but mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't away on business at that time. So. Uh, so what did you make of it when he went and Craig Gordon fronted it up and it landed at James's feet? Did you think it was going to go in? Because I think it was in slow motion to me. I was behind Craig's goal. I was just stunned. Huh? Absolutely stunned. I mean, obviously we'd been under the cosh. Huh? And uh, it, it, to pull that out the way that he did was was just remarkable. Mm -hmm. And I mean, obviously you're, you're celebrating the goal. I was with, I was with a, a Dutch friend of mine um, in the bar. But I mean, after it, you're, you're actually just in silence because you think, did, did that really just happen mm -hmm. uh, the, way that, the way that it did? And he's a talisman to come forward. We've not really had many players. Maybe Lee Griffiths, what he did against England in 2017. We'll talk about that in a wee moment soon, right? But James's other goals, if I remember correctly, right? He's done some other performances. He's won against Macedonia. Mm -hmm. I spoke to him before it and I said, James, you're going to get a goal better than France. Yeah. Probably will. Yeah. Well, came in and gave me a thumbs up. And he did it, he single-handedly dribbled. But we just love that gallusness, don't we? Yes. We just absolutely love it. And we've had players that can do that uh, right down through the through the generations. And it's what gets you off your seat. Um, it's why folk want to go along and watch football. And I think when you talk about, and I don't want to be critical of any of the managers that we've had, but they've been... Let's put it this way, there's managers that haven't quite excited the Tartan Army. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, of course we want Scotland to qualify, we want Scotland to do well. But that gallusness mm -hmm. is, is, is something which has always been within us as a, as a nation, and it's fantastic to see players that have got that something just a wee bit special. What do you think of the, the, the SFA grassroots football, and even the Scottish Government, for putting money in through the lottery? What would improve Scottish football? Why are we not qualifying? in 22 years, it will be 23 years because of the reschedule with the Covid. Well, things have changed since I was a boy because when I was growing up, what you did was you played football, that was it, you played football in the street, um, you, you grew up with it and of course there's lots of other attractions for young people these days. We need to make sure that people are taught the right way, mm -hmm. um, there's, been, there's been review after review after review, well, we come away and we talk about the, the excellence of the Dutch system amongst others and mm -hmm. the way that they develop young talent, look at that Dutch team. That, that beat us in, in Amsterdam the, the week after James McFadden's wonder strike. Look at the way that the young boys that they had coming through at the time, the Wesley Snyders of this world and so on, and their natural ability to play football. We've got to allow people to express themselves. Um, so we've got, to, we've got to go back to the basics as far as, as, far as that's concerned. I mean, you talk about me being a, being a Hibs fan, and often folk will have a go at me because I'll talk about the the Hibs team that I can remember in the late 60s and particularly Tumbles Tornadoes but my god what a joy to watch the like of Alec Edwards and Crockley and mm -hmm. all these players and even in more recent times when I think about the players that really excited me Russell Atapi, Frank Sozzi you want to see something a bit special mm -hmm. but you need to make sure that people have got the, the right education, the right coaching so that they can express themselves Chick Charlie, mm -hmm. there was a guy that had something special of course never played for Scotland mm -hmm. um, that's what you want. You want, you want people that can, that can play. We look at some of the players that come out of Hibs, right? You've got Derek Reardon, you've got Gary Connor, yeah. you've got Lee Griffiths, you've got John McGinn, when well, he came to Spunk at Hibs. Yeah. But there's been a lot of good players from Hibs who went on to bigger clubs, played for Scotland. A lot of left footers as well. Yeah. Hong Kong's a left footer, Lee Griffiths, in okay. fact. We're going. We'll talk about that. His yep. two free kicks against England. How did it feel? Hi, but just before you do that, because like, I think there's something important that you say. I was, I was actually looking at a picture just the other day uh, of Tan McManus on his Twitter feed. Mm -hmm. And it was five young boys that were playing for Hibs at the same time. Tan McManus, Scott Dobby, Gary O'Connor, Derek Vardon, 
in Scott Brown. They were actually all forwards at, at, at that time. Right. But you see, and, and you, you, you chuck John Collins into the mix there. And I, I remember listening to Darren Jackson talking about the, the influence that John Collins had on him. And that, that professionalism, that going into the gym, that preparing. And I often think when you talk about when you talk about some of that talent that was there, and you think about Ryder, Ryder had, had something that was special. But did they ever achieve his potential the way he should have done? No. The answer's no, the same as true with Gary O'Connor. Mm. Young guys Money went to see. Money went to see. Mm. But they need an arm round the shoulder. They need mentoring. Mm -hmm. And I mean you, you, you talk about that that, that, that Hibbs team and they probably lacked that, that mentoring to help them through to make sure they were making mm -hmm. the right kind of decisions. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've probably seen as naturally a gifted football player as Derek Ryder uh, with, his, with his two feet. It was, it was something special. Mm -hmm. and you talk about, I know you were going to talk about free mm -hmm. kicks, but mm -hmm. I, mean, I can remember in particular one free kick he took in, in a derby against Hearts that mm -hmm. was just something special. Do you remember any goals that Derek scored for Scotland and Gary Conn? Um, I've got to be honest and say no. Right, okay, right. We'll move on to Lee Griffiths' two free kicks, right? How did that feel, <laughs> great? Just come on. Oh, right. don't take us back there. Right, right, right. Uh, but before that, we had, we had 2013, the friendly. Yeah. We take the lead for Norris. And then we de decoy. And then yeah. Kenny Mark, who's an off former Hibs player. That's right. And another wonder goal. Yes, well, absolutely. Keep, if I remember rightly, I think he just came with us. Turned the ball and then banged it in. It was unbelievable. Right. Because he'd come with a summer thing, hadn't he? Mm -hmm. um, that was another game I was at as mm -hmm. well. Uh, no, that was, a bit, that was a wee bit special. Kenny Miller was a, a great professional. Someone that used his abilities to, to the absolute utmost. Um, but no, when you talk about that moment at Hamden, um, Again, to come back and for for Sparky to do it not once but twice, mm. and to have that crushing ball. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, how many ways has Scotland found to lose a football game? Mm. Um, but there, there we go again, where they. Well, we're now we're well, now it's coming out of the playoffs. It's been rearranged, right? Yeah. Come October, we don't know where the fans are going to be. At. We don't know, right? That's that's for up to the Scottish government to uh -huh. sort out and uh -huh. the football authorities, right? What do you think our chances are against Israel? And then we've got the choice of Norway or Serbia. Two tough games. You've got Norway, you've got that player who scored goals for fun for Russia Dortmund. And you've got names I couldn't even mention for Serbia. Excuse me. Yeah, right? But do you think if we have somebody grabs the scuff of the net and wins this game, mention players in the current squad, the now delightful through players that may through the English Premiership, they'll come in and grab it by. We've got a chance. We've, we've got some really good players. I mean, you mentioned some of them, and I'm a particular fan of again. We're not a finished article, let's be honest. I mean, we need to, whether Sparky can come back and flourish the way that he needs to, but it's a question about having that inspirational figure up front. I still think it's centre back. There's some challenges that we face as well. But we're not a bad team. Uh, we've got some decent players, so you've got to think there's a chance. And we've been lucky. We've We've been to see Scotland in finals, whether it's European finals or, or the World Cup finals. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time, a whole generation of people that haven't seen it, and I really do mm -hmm. hope that all of us have got that chance to go back and support Look Scotland. That, that's, that's it's I was 27, yeah. and I was 98. I'm now, I'll be 50 next year. Yeah. Right? And I'll just say it to you on the record, you're more than welcome to come to my 50s, because I went to launch this documentary. And it's been a pleasure interviewing you, Mr. Blackman. Thank, Thank you. you very much for the time. Thanks. I